So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we'd rather be away from the body and be at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. Good morning! Good morning. The resurrection, we're continuing from not last week because y'all all skipped. I was here, just so you know, I was here. I was waiting on y'all to show up. Right, Charlie? Right, James? I was here, wasn't I? Okay, I showed up to church. No, we did We didn't miss a week, so let's recap. We are talking about the resurrection. We will be for this week and next week. Three-part lesson on the resurrection. This week we are focused on the resurrection, but more than just the resurrection, but the resurrection order. But let me begin with a story of a man. He's out in the desert, dying of thirst, and he comes to the edge of the desert and he sees a church. And he goes in and he says, I want some water. And all he says is, I just want some water. So, you know, there's, there's five men there, and one of them goes, here's, here's a bottle of water. And the other goes, no, 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 don't, don't give the bottle of water. He doesn't need a bottle of water. He needs something cooler. I've got some ice that's melting. You know, that would be cooler, better for the person coming from the desert. Well, the other one goes, well, I got some snow. And it would make him think cool thoughts. And when it melts, he'd be fully refreshed with that water. That'd be the best water. And the other goes, no, I have this purified water. And it's so big, he can drink as much as he wants. And the man dies of thirst. <laughs> Waiting for somebody to make a decision about this amazing water. And today we're talking about something just as serious. We're talking about the resurrection. And when I say resurrection order, I realized the first problem I got was most people think of the resurrection order would naturally go to, how does it work? You know, does our soul go instantly when we die to heaven and then our body resurrection at a different point? And let's divide and let's make 1,500 ideas and fight over it for a while while that person sits there and dies of thirst. Because we're not talking about water that's bottled. We're talking about the living water that is given to us that overflows to life abundantly. 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, starting in verse 20. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who are asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, so also in Christ all will be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruit. After that, those who are Christ at his coming. Christ the first fruit. After that, those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end. When he hands over the kingdom to the God and Father. When he has abolished all rule and all authority and power. When we talk about order, we are not talking about Splitting hairs over the stupidest things I can find to fight about. We're talking about the resurrection order. We're only talking about one thing. We're looking at Christ. And we're looking at Christ and we're saying, Jesus came and showed us how to do something we couldn't do. He proved it was possible. He not only came and said, okay, this is what you need to do. And one day you will have this new body and you will be in heaven with me and great glory. And the day of your death will be better than the day of your birth. No, no. He said a little bit more. He said, I'm not just going to tell you about this. I'm going to walk down there with you and I'm going to show you what it's like. I'm going to be resurrected in front of you so you can see it. So there'll be witnesses who can claim and say, I saw the resurrection. And we can look at it and we can say, I am waiting for the resurrection. And that man who is dying of thirst, we won't fight over, well, how do I give him the water? We're going to look to it and we're going to look to it and we're going to say this, we saw Christ and him resurrected. We know Christ and the power of the resurrection. 
We know Christ in the power of eternal life in him. He continues in verse 25. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy, the last enemy that will be abolished is death. For he has put all things in subjection under his feet. When he says, all things are put in subjection, it is evident that he is accepting who put all things in subjection to him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself also will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him, so that God may be all in all. The last enemy is death. Too often we have spent our time focused on so many things. And do you realize if we get this one chapter in the Bible wrong, we get the resurrection wrong? Scooped! What a pointless day it is. And if we get exactly down every little specific detail and we fight about every little thing, do you realize we fight about silence? I'm not saying that's stupid, because it's mean to call things stupid, but you get the point. I, I want to tell you a little personal. I got an email from this church when I was in Ohio, and my first two thoughts was, one, it's West Virginia. I've met someone from West Virginia. He's not nice. Sorry, the whole state is made up of one person now. It's not really logical. And I was like, all he ever does is talk about how much he hates everything. He's a preacher. He, he tells you... How much he hates this and hates that and hates hates and I was like I went to church once there and I was like wife are we gonna call that hate church so we can distinguish and she's like yes hate church the other problem was he they said this is a church of Christ and I was like well what do they mean by that do they mean that when I get there we're gonna nitpick and fight about every little detail and when that person says can I have some water we're gonna be like well, we got to figure out all the details to that. I mean, what's the best container to give you that water in? Well, let's fight about everything. And once we agree on everything, then I can go to my neighbor right over the street and I can say, brother, you need water. Let me give you water. And I'll admit, I was nervous. I sent an email back and I just hoped, you know, they would read it and go, we don't want this guy. <laughs> Seems like it worked for me. And I asked all those questions. I said, are y'all nitpicking over this or that or this or that? No. Okay. Because all I could imagine of this church before I got here was this church, and it had to be a white church, by the way. It's always white, and it has one single steeple, and it can't be as wide as it is. Sorry, I broke the rules. It's a narrow building, and I was just imagine coming in here, and everybody would be ready to fight over these little intricacies of doctrine. And everybody would be ready to fight over every little thing. And the enemy of death would be so ignored that we wouldn't even think about it. We'd look at people dying and we'd say, oh, you know, it happens. Live and let die. And the truth is, it's too easy for us to do that. It is. There's risk in everything you do. And one of the risks of us is we get so caught up in every little thing we disagree on that we've got a world looking out there for water and saying, I'm dying, and we go, well, hold on. We've got to figure out all these little stupid things we're concerned about. We've got to finish hating each other long enough to actually help you out. Continues this thought of this resurrection in 29. Otherwise, what will those do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why then are they baptized for them? Why are we also in danger every hour? I affirm, brethren, by the boasting in you which I have, in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If from human motives I have fought with the wild beasts at Ephesus, what does it profit me? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink. For tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Become sober-minded as you ought, and stop sinning. For some have no knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. 
I love how he ends it. He says, some have no knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. It's your fault. When Paul ends the message, he is so brash and so rushed. And it's just like, well, that's not nice. And that's not the nicety we want. And it's not. That's not how Paul tells us things. He says, your fault. You're busy fighting over that water. You're busy obsessing over stupid things. And there are those who don't know God. There, there are those in our community who do not know God. And when we face up to the reality that death is our enemy and not the world is, the people are not our enemy. The people of the world are not our enemy. Our enemy is death. And it's an enemy that all of us share. It's not as though Adam sinned and then some people were going to die. So Jesus came for some people. It's as it says, one was enough for sin to enter the whole world so that we would all be facing death. And one is enough that through him, all of us face life eternally. Paul mentioned something here that they were dealing with, and this was it. They had this idea. A group who struggled with the resurrection, who didn't believe in a physical resurrection, were baptizing people for the dead. Josephus talks in depth about this, and what he talks about is how stupid everything is. He says, now wait a minute, wait a minute. You haven't even got the resurrection figured out and you're sitting here talking about being baptized for the dead. Well, if the dead are not raised, let's party. Let's eat, drink, tomorrow we die. And he gives us a simple message. And that's what's so sad. It is that Christ gave us a simple message. And it's not, not as though our teachers. It's not one of those where you have a preacher up there saying things and it may not even apply to him. I've never been submissive to my husband. I just want you to know. I know that's a sin, but I've never done it. There are things in the scripture that I'm just telling you I've never experienced. And I'm so glad that's not Jesus for us. Jesus doesn't say, let me tell you about the resurrection. He came, he experienced, he showed us the resurrection. So that our death is such a reality that we look at our death and we say, am I looking at death with hope or knowledge? Because we have twisted the word hope in the Bible till it looks like something a five-year-old would make up. Hope is when you guess. We've changed out the word hope for guess. That's not biblical. Hope is the assurance. Assurance, knowing I got it down back. It's nailed there. It's not moving. That's hope in the Bible. And too often we look at heaven in the day of our death and we say, I hope. I don't hope nothing. I live for my God. He is my God. I serve him. He is my Lord. And I'm getting there and walking in. And I'm tired of people telling me, well, I hope. No, don't hope. You know what he has called us to do. And we don't want to hope. We want to know. He says, so that you may know that you have eternal life. First John is so beautiful in that he says that he says that you may know. And that is the exact thing offered to us in the resurrection. He said, you remember when I died on that cross and I was buried and I rose? And all the witnesses and all the proof there is for it? That same thing's going to happen again. You can be part of it. You are invited. Romans 6, 3 through 6 talks about this exact thing. His resurrection and our joining in. Romans 6, 3 through 6. 
Or do you not know? What was that word? Not hope. What was it? No. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. Two parts of this lesson. I don't know where you stand. And it is the dumbest thing to hope in the sense we use the word. It is the greatest thing to know in the sense we use the word. And to say, I am going to death one day. It's better than my birth. My birth, I got to put on a human body that just kind of went downhill the whole time. Never got better. Started out cold and wet and it got worse. But our death is nothing like that. It just gets better, better, better. And to know that we have that is the most important thing in our life. But the other point we need to focus on is this. If we spend all our time arguing and fighting, we're going to forget that person down the road. We're going to forget that person who doesn't know anything. They don't know God, and it's our fault. And we need to be reminded continuously that the resurrection means more to us than all the teachings in Scripture. Because, as Paul said it, if, if it's not real, let's go party, guys. Let's just go party until we die. But if there is a resurrection, it should change the way we live and the way we reach out. And that is what God offered us to know that we have eternal life. He, he says that believing on him, repenting of our sins and that old self dying away, that confession of him as Lord, so that we can come there and call him Lord once again in heaven. Serve at his table, feasting with him. Being buried with him in baptism, as it said, that washing away, that remission of sins, that being united with Christ, all those beautiful images of us joining his resurrection. And then living for him as though he is Lord, so that we may know that the day of our death is better than the day of our birth there's anybody who doesn't know that and I don't mean hope I mean no we offer an invitation if there's anybody who needs prayers or wishes to submit to the eldership here we ask you to come now as we stand and as we sing